In the office. Are Safety. you in trouble? In the office. Oh, crud. Oh, no. Okay. This? Not what's, safe. What's wrong with it? This one? Yeah, I got hungry. Yeah, not safe. Those ones? Those ones are safe. So we use the red ones now. And not, and not, and not those ones. But I, I like those ones. Those are what... But I know. They've, been, I, they've been working well. Well, this is just how it is. So, red ropes, good. Yank them, good. They can't be reconditioned? What else we paint them red? Maybe. Can I combine all three of them together and use it? I just, I better not see any footage of you guys using these. I'm gonna okay. so use okay. one. Only this stuff. All right. Okay, good, we got this talk. All right. So coming up on to almost a year from when we put that playground in on the place, remember that when I had that teleskid and set it up and everything? Well, the slide on that thing really stinks. It's got like this bump in it and it's just not very kid friendly, which is kind of weird because it's like a, a playground set. So my mom went ahead and got the kids a little something right here. Nice little enclosed swirly slide. I'm gonna put this together and go put it on there. The kids I think are gonna go play on the place here soon. It's uh. Was it March still? So it's cold, but now's a great time to get this done and get it out of the shop. Let's put this together really fast. Time lapse style, fast. I just gotta unscrew the top. There's three uh, okay. torque heads right here. I have them in the box. I gotta take this piece off right here and then I'm gonna screw it right to this two by four. It's just gonna go right there and then I'll build steps so I can go up and then figure out a pad down below for the mount on the ground. Yes! Now we just gotta let it warm up a little bit outside so the kids can come out. They are having some serious cabin fever this winter and this is gonna get some good use. All right, I'm gonna go find what the other guys are doing. Rosie, Rosie, where are you going? Down. That way to the tunnel, Luke, you coming too? Are you gonna come? Does that, does, that mean, does that mean pick you up? What do you think that tunnel is? A green. But what is it? What do you do with that tunnel? I just go down. You go down it? Mm -hmm. Are you saying it's a slide? Yeah. Really? Are you excited, Luke? Hmm. Hmm? Really excited? Okay. They're just, just so excited. What do you want to do? Do you want to go down the tunnel? You got spaghetti on your face. Luke, can you say tunnel? Duh. Here we go. <gasps> Are you really going to do that? Yep. Oh, you're pretty brave. Okay. Here you go. Whoa, that looks fun. Whoa! Ten. You want to go on the swing? Hmm. You don't want to go down the slide either? I'll be down here waiting for you. <laughs> Is that fun? Yeah. Back in the shop. I know, big surprise. Got the Suburban in here. There's some issues that I've been dealing with and I decided I'm going to try to fix it with the poor man's method. See this little uh, paint chip here? It's been getting worse and worse. Every time I pressure wash, it keeps peeling it off. I don't know if it got hit there one time, previous owner, who knows. So I ordered one of these, uh, this is an AC Delco paint kit for it. It's got clear coat and paint. I'm gonna try it. So let's put this on here real quick, touch up a couple spots, and then I'll get back to working on that railing. And there's a lot more we gotta do, but this is uh, first up on the list, so let's go. Oh, by the way, you notice I'm rolling around right now? That's because I'm on Quickie, and Quickie, is now officially owned by Adam Sherman. Thank you, Adam. He wanted his name on Quickie. He's a patron, he's a farm legend, that's the top tier. And he chose Quickie out of all of our farm equipment. He's on Quickie. Adam, you're hilarious. We laughed so hard when you picked that. That is so funny. So I hope you're happy, that's great. I'll be showing more of you guys soon. But yeah, Adam, your name's gonna be in there. And yes, we do use Quickie often in the shop. All right, back to work. Well, yeah, that's not perfect, but 
I didn't know for the longest time this thing had a brush in it, so I was trying to do the little dab part on it for little touch-ups for the big areas that were chipped out, but I don't, whatever, let's see if that worked. I put the clear coat on it too, but all right. It's white paint, that's easy to touch up. Let's get back to work. So I got back to doing the railing for the lake house. These are the four by four vertical pieces that I'll be putting in, but I've got to drill holes for the bolts to bolt it to the decking. I haven't done that yet. So I got two per each, I think that'll be enough. I'm not gonna use a real heavy bolt, but definitely big enough to hold that thing together. So I got the end mill set up. I'll start marking off where I want the holes, start running these through, pound out all those holes, and then I'm gonna start wiping stuff down, I think, and get ready to put some paint on it, because I've got some direct to metal paint that hopefully will be good to go. I'll make this look really nice, but this is just, I gotta get this done because I got time right now. Let's do it. Well, I've been working on these for a while. I'm just about ready to wash them and get some paint on them. I got one more panel to build. It's amazing how long it takes, but dad finished filling the fertilizer into those bins. So I'm gonna go over with him Bring the tractor back. We've got a pile of rebar over there somewhere. I'm gonna find another stick of this three eighths because I need more. So, let's go. Okay. Well, he figured it out just perfect. I think it's pretty full. There's little sight glasses, like I've said in the past. There's three on here, and the very top one is covered. That wouldn't fit in there. That little pile that was left. <laughs> He's got a little bit left there. Okay, I'm gonna take this is not the rebar i want right here but let me close this lid i love these lids i know a lot of guys run bins with lids that do this but this is a new uh luxury for welker farms just take the tension off there we go lid is shut well these hoppers they are full and these aren't going to be quite enough as i said in a previous video 500,000 pounds of fertilizer well we did we got 250 ton that's times 2,000 is 500,000 pounds half a million pounds of fertilizer those don't hold 250 ton. They hold probably 220 ton. So we're gonna have a little more we gotta pick up when the time comes. I'll grab the Magnum here in a second. Let's go find a piece of rebar. I think it's hiding over here. So I'd be lying if I didn't feel the pressure of spring work coming on. It would definitely help if I didn't have a lake house to be worrying about as well. But, and the coronavirus, that's changed the scenario a lot more. But we are working as well trying to get this spot right here ready for two big grain bins, those 25,000 West Steel bins. Yeah, we're excited. They're gonna go right here. It's about the flattest area we got in this whole bin setup, but we gotta get gravel. And it's supposedly gonna come next week. They're gonna bring it out. So we'll put a bunch of gravel out here. I think like 60 or 70 yards worth. That way they have enough to work with. We can use in this area because it's dirt and this happens and you can't get trucks in and out here when this happens. And we've got spring wheat seed in some of these bins that's gotta get clean to plant this year. And he can't even get in here with his machine because it's just a sloppy mess. And then I also need to get on Farmer's Business Network. I gotta get some stuff ordered for this year because I gotta put some pre-emergent chemical down for some of our chickpeas and peas. I gotta get some Roundup ordered, all kinds of stuff. So, oh, there it is. I was gonna say the rebar is down here somewhere. Got sidetracked, sorry. It's uh, fortunately a little exposed. I'm looking for some 3 8 sticks and those are not 3 8 those are half inch sticks. I'll see what I can find. But what I was saying is, gotta get some stuff for it through FBN, get it out here, the farm. So I'll jump on that in a second, but for now, let's get this rebar out of here. I don't see any 3 8 It'd been nice if we would've just put them on the concrete, you know, like this right here, but we didn't. So I gotta go to town and get a stick. So I'll get the tractor back and then get back to what I was doing. It's actually quite nice outside. Feeling spring coming. It's coming guys. Ah, those aren't waterproof. Bad idea. I'll leave that connected because we're going to be using that shortly, probably first part of next week. And I don't think we're going to be using that tractor for a couple days. So rather than put the stand on disconnecting the PTO and everything, we'll just leave her connected. I don't know if you guys remember, I did say we sold the rest of this building in here. Well, that's next up. We're going to get that thing moved. I'm looking forward to that. And when I say thing, I mean peas, not the building. It's Friday and it has been a busy week, but not the typical kind of busy, more like sit down, make decisions on the computer, doing stuff like that busy. But I want to get outside. It's getting a little nicer. We need gravel on this farm. We had a really nice layer of gravel put across all of our roads. So what's going on is our roads had a nice layer of gravel on it, but it's sort of sunk in over the years. We needed some more stockpiled on the farm. 
I'm thinking about getting the dump truck started up. That's international. I think it's a 4300 international. Get that baby fired up, head to town. They're gonna load me up some gravel, some nice gravel, because we got some tanks that need to move around from different areas that need some kind of base put on it, because otherwise it's gonna be a sloppy mess going into this year. Bring it to the farm, make a pile, and that way we can start using as we need, because I just like having a stockpile of gravel on the farm. We're in an area that just does not have good gravel. There's just not much gravel in the area. In fact, actually our county is struggling to find decent gravel pits in the area because there just isn't. And the area that does have gravel is either like state land or it has some kind of Indian teepee rings or something on it and they can't touch it. So gravel in, at some point in time in this area is gonna have to be imported in, which is gonna be a real big bummer. Okay, that's enough talking, let's get to work. Compared to a couple years ago, which you guys probably remember, this area was flooded. We had a lot of snowpack in the fields. It melted quickly and it came rushing through our farm because our farm is kind of the low spot of this area. So. It's not nearly as bad as it was, but you know what's really cool? There's a whole bunch of geese flying north. It's a good sign. I don't know how they know when it's time to head north, but they do. That means spring is coming. I get a lot of people asking, what's up with that Wagner? And what's up with the Versatile? Haven't started that, haven't tried yet. This doesn't have an engine, so this can't start. They have been sitting because the lake house and a couple other things that happened this winter kind of put a kibosh to those plans. Don't worry, they're here on the farm. And that means that when the time comes, we'll be able to tackle them. But Let's get this running, because this one is ready to run. I just gotta make sure the batteries are good. Well, that's not a surprise. It hasn't ran in quite a few months, actually since <laughs> last fall sometime, maybe late summer, I don't know, it's been a while. So the batteries are not dead, but they're weak. And that big cam 400 is just not gonna turn over. Actually, it's a big cam three. So I'm gonna get the thumb and some jumper cables, let it run for a while. And someday I'll buy a jump pack. Just haven't done it. <laughs> Not bad. That's okay. One little jump. I like that. stopped in they filled me up so I'm gonna go dump this behind the building we got a spot there where we like to dump the gravel and then we're gonna start using that on and off to fill up low spots this stuff isn't quite the type of top gravel I'd want to put down for the final surface so we'll just use this as a base it'll work great but it'll pack real hard a lot of sand a lot of gravel and it's not terribly expensive too but go dump this and then keep going It's getting to be that time of year where we need to have clean seed for this coming year. That is something we have to worry about. There's a guy that we have each year comes by, cleans our seed, pulls right from our bins, and then we put it in another bin and we use that to go right in the ground. Well, he's coming by actually tomorrow, which means we need to get some stuff set up for him to arrive. Got to move some augers, move some trucks, move some uh, like grain out vac, couple other things. How about you just join us for the ride and we'll just explain as we go. Cause there's a few things that we're gonna do and it's gonna be a little bit of chaos, but there's uh, a method to our chaos. We're gonna try it at least, but yeah, let's go. You remember those bins that we moved and we put on hopper bottoms? Well, we never did put ladders on those things. We mean to, but we just haven't gotten to it. We're gonna use the scissor lift to go up and down the bins to check it. Take the skid steer and we're gonna put it on a truck tie it down, move the pickup over there, and we'll just leave it over there and have the scissor lift going up and down. Oh, he's coming right at me. There we go. Oh, he's gotta wait his turn. I guess I better grab the new Holland, huh? There we 
we go. Pretty sure we need a little bit of air in that tire. We'll go put some in. You gotta love those swell valves. They're good motors. Oh, I know you uh, Yes, okay, okay, you convinced me. Yes, you get to drive the next leg. They were meant for each other, weren't they? All right, let's go move this truck. There we have it. So we moved all of these bins, uh, I think it was last year or the year before, and we have in these two right here, there is wintery and spring wheat in these two. We're gonna use one of these bins to seed this year for spring wheat. And one's got peas, and then this one's empty. We're gonna put spring wheat in here, the stuff that we get cleaned in this one, which means we gotta go up on top and open the lid, but there's no ladder there. That's why we have the scissor lift. So we'll get on the scissor lift, go up there, open the lift, but we won't do that now until we actually have the auger over here, so yeah. Now that we dropped off that pickup and the scissor lift, we're gonna head over, grab the case IH tractor and that auger that we used for the fertilizer, and we're gonna use that one to auger into the bin. I love that tractor. It's just been a great tractor. I'll let him walk through the mud and he can start it. I'm a good son. I let him do most of the work. Oh, he's slipping. I better not watch. Now we just gotta go up. Man, I... Climbing ladders is so much easier and they're just so much safer too. I don't know why people use scissor lifts. Eh, oh well, I'm almost there. It's kind of actually swaying pretty good. Let's slide this thing forward. There we go. Now I can walk up on the bin and open the top. <laughs> There we have it. Case sites, tractor, scissor lift, bins open, augers in there ready to go for some clean wheat. Now let's go get some trucks and other stuff ready so we can get going on it tomorrow. It's getting nice outside. We've got our Welker River going. Not nearly as big as the last two years. Last two years, literally this road, this whole area here was all underwater, not this year. Just didn't get the snowpack that we did before. But what happens every year, this ditch up here floods. Try to get the water into the other side of the road in that ditch to help these trees out because we're in a dry country here. Might not go right now, but it does get dry. And when that happens, trees don't survive, as you guys can tell, because we have hardly any trees. We ran into this little guy here. Hey, what's going on? Rock. You rock? Huh. Did you see the water? Are you playing with the water? That's Luke. He's not a menace. He's awesome. Rosie, what do you see? Rosie, I, I'm pretty sure that you're not 16 years old. Are you? Are you 16? Yep. You are. Oh, so that means you can drive this? Is Luke 16? He is? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, well, there you go then. Go ahead, drive it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't? Oh. So on the farm, a lot of times, you just gotta use what you have available. This car lift, awesome painting rig because I can just take some square tubing, run it across, put the panels on it, paint, slide one across, paint, slide one across. Rust-Oleum paint, it's supposedly direct to metal, we'll see how it works. I, it looks like good stuff, but don't know until you get some ears under the belt, so we'll find out, but let's get to work. My lovely wife and I have been taking turns painting on these things. Obviously we have to take turns watching kids. But this roller works pretty good. I'm just kind of going on through the rebar, getting the front and back side of this thing. And then we come by with the brush 
brush all the corners, take the roller and do the top and the bottom of the angle line. So we'll see. I'm hoping that this works out well. This paint seems to be pretty solid. So we'll uh, see if it holds up to the test of time because I don't want to do this twice, but it's looking good. It's amazing what some black paint will do to a bunch of iron. And yes, I did pressure wash with a steam cleaner. It's nice and clean. So this should adhere very well. And the temperature in the shop is like 65 degrees to 70. So it's kind of right in that area where it should be. Well, now that things are warming up a little bit, we're gonna go to our one of our buildings that's uh, on the very opposite side of the farm. It's got a couple of our trucks in it. Our seed truck, our fertilizer truck, we're gonna get them, bring them back over here because we need them next week because we're cleaning grain and we need to get them ready for spring planting. Guys are in the pickup right here waiting for me. I'm just taking my time, but I'm, I'm gonna get in here eventually. We figure we better get them, get them to the farmyard and that way we can make sure they're good to go. What are you doing? Texting. And While driving. driving. And driving. Don't worry. Everybody's in lockdown, so we can just drive where we want. There's no one on the roads out here. Yeah. There's me. never anyone on the roads out here. This shelter in place, and this is kind of a shelter, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it is. So, all right. Let's roll. Guess what? I am stuck. I thought I would be able to pull it out, which I can, but it's kind of soupy right here and I can't seem to get it to turn. Yeah, it's a little stuck. Reason why we're trying to get this pup is when we clean the seed, we always have the cleanings is what they call it. You have other seeds or shells or chaff or other things that you don't want, the smallest kernels you don't want to keep, that's got to go somewhere. Well, you can still market that, which isn't always all bad stuff, but we need to put it in something and we're gonna put it in this. So we need to get this out of here and move it over to where we're gonna have him clean so he can put the cleanings in this and then when we go to sell some spring wheat, we'll mix this in and then sell it and away we go. All farmers and other people do the exact same thing. Even seed companies do the exact same thing too. So it's not uncommon. It's always good to just inspect inside to make sure there's nothing in there and we're looking good. There we go. We're gonna go get the 4520 with the grain vac and we're gonna take it down where we've got the unclean spring wheat. We're gonna load it into the truck, bring it back to a bin that uh, the guy's gonna clean out of. We need to get this all set up today because he comes tomorrow. We're gonna be doing some things tomorrow. We need to get a lot of stuff done now. Boy, in the Fummins, I'm gonna be a real trucker today. So we have some seed in this bin right here that actually needs to be cleaned. We're gonna use this bin as a surge tank. So he's gonna hook up his cleaner next to this bin. We'll clean out of it into his cleaner. Then use that pup, which is right over here. We'll put it in position when we get his cleaner. That'll be for the cleanings. And then we'll have a good clean truck with a clean seat on long side and he'll dump into that. And then that goes over the bin. So we're gonna use this location as a search location. And my dad, he's heading down with the grain vac. We're gonna meet him down at the building where the two tandem trucks are and then get next to those two bins, set up the grain vac, get the trucks loaded, bring them back here, and then uh, that should be ready for tomorrow. Hopefully, we don't get stuck with those trucks down there. If we get stuck, we'll have to bring the big dog down. I don't know which one the big dog is, but we'll figure out one of the big dogs and pull those trucks out of there because it's a little bit soupy the other day. One of the nice things about being a farmer is we have a, an amazing opportunity to feed so many people around the world. Because of the technology that we have today, the different types of machinery that are out there to help make our lives easier, the chemicals that they have to help prevent weeds and other unnecessary like uh, fungus and bacteria and things that can cause the damage to the crops. We have such an amazing opportunity to feed so many and that's a huge blessing for us. And especially right now with the, the crisis that's going on in the world, people gotta eat. And you know what? We're gonna do our best to make sure that we can provide 
good, healthy means of food. We want the best that we can do. We don't want to just make money all the time. I mean, money is a huge factor, but we want to make sure that our product is healthy, nutritious, and good for human consumption. We're very, very thankful to be a part of the crew that provides food for everyone. There's thousands of people around the world that give you the little means of uh, like a candy bar to bread to eggs to all those kind of different types so thank you to all of you guys that make that happen and thank you truckers for being a part of that because truckers trains and people that uh, move the product we wouldn't have it in locations like Shelby Montana so thank you appreciate it guys looking a little uh, soupy up here let's put this in four-wheel drive so hopefully we don't get stuck that wasn't too sketchy you just never know. Okay, let's go open these doors and uh, see if we can get one of the trucks to start. Might need a jump, we'll see. It's always good to check the oil before you start rigs. I'll check the coolant too, but guess who arrived? Oh boy, this is gonna be fun getting those trucks in and out of here. But we gotta get those trucks loaded and we gotta get the wheat clean because otherwise we're on a waiting list for this guy to come around and he's gonna go to other people. By the time he gets back to us, well, it's gonna be pretty close to seating and we don't need to be messing with that. So we're gonna make a mess of things. It's a Welker Lake again. There's a little bit of a low spot here and there was a snow drift here the other day. Well, it's melting and it's a little muddy. We never placed these bins here. We bought this place, but probably the last year these bins are gonna be here. So we're figuring out something else then right here. We moved two of them and you saw those on the hopper. These two, I think, are prone to be migrating west. So that'll be great. Whoop, there's a gear. My bad. Shifting with one hand isn't the best thing. We're gonna go get uh, one of the big buds because when those trucks are full and it's soupy like that, you need something to just slowly creep along and help pull those trucks through that mud. Once we get out of that yard, everything's fine. But it's just right there next to the bin. Is, yeah, it's gonna be a mess. Let's go wake these things up. We got a couple nice things in here too. Two buds and two bins. Ooh, there we go. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Ah, you guys will see it eventually. We went ahead and just parked that tractor out there for right now. Let's go get this one started, the 435. Grab a little ether. Hopefully we can get this thing to fire up. It always bleeds a little bit of fuel. Didn't you drill a hole? Oh, here it is. Okay, here's a little plug on the side. He's gonna go ahead and take that over. I'll shut this building down and then I'll go grab something to pull it out. And yeah, fun, fun. Love these new doors. It slides so well. That's awesome. I am getting extremely excited to see these two bins that are inside this building be assembled in probably a couple months, if not sooner. When this concrete is laid and poured, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun to see that. It's crazy to think that there's like $50,000 in here in metal. Say hi. <laughs> you. Yeah, it's you. My son Roscoe. Hi. Cute as always. Hey, oh, he wants us to go to the bike. You wanna go to the bike? Hey, Ooh, ride your bike. Whoops. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my daughter just got a bike for her birthday. She's four years old, and apparently she's really frustrated <laughs> on trying to ride the bike. The struggles of life. Okay, you ready? Push forward. Yeah, look at you go. <laughs> Taryn, how old are you? Three. You're three? I thought you just turned four. Yeah. Oh, look. Ah! That is definitely my daughter. <laughs> 